John. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am very glad to be able to visit Paris again. As all of you are aware, I made a three-week tour of 11 African countries. I had very useful exchanges of views with the heads of governments and heads of states in all those countries, particularly on matters of interest to Africa and the United Nations. And I must say that these talks were very useful. It added to my knowledge, they added to my knowledge very significantly. I am looking forward to seeing President Pompidou tomorrow. He has very kindly invited me and to come and have a discussion with him, particularly my impressions of my trip. As you all know, I received a very kind message from President Pompidou, while I was in Niami, I believe, I am convinced that uh, President Pompidou was motivated by genuine humanitarian feelings. And I am also preoccupied with the humanitarian aspects of the problem of Nigeria. I made statements at every stop in every capital of every African state. I made my positions very well known. Unfortunately, I discovered later on in the course of my trip that some of my statements made in Dhaka, for instance, or in Accra, for instance, and in Niamey were distorted. I don't know by whom. For instance, when I arrived at Abidjan, I was informed that the press reports in Abidjan of my press conference proceedings in Dhaka two weeks earlier were so much distorted that there was a widespread misunderstanding of my position. So I had to instruct the, the United Nations people in Abidjan to release to the press and the public the full text of my press conference in Abidjan. When it was released, then it was admitted that the press dispatches were distorted. Well, I don't know the motivations behind this, but anyhow, if you study my press conference statements at every stop, I'll see to it, you will get the full text of my statements and press conferences. You will realize that I yield to no one in my abhorrence and condemnation of violence and hatred and war. About my quick trip to Lagos, I had opportunities of hearing the reports of my special representative, General Khan, and Mr. Henrik Beer, head of the League of Red Cross Societies and others. And I have come to the conclusion that the situation in the areas of conflict is peaceful. There was even fraternizing with the peoples of the area, including the Igbos, behind the forces, armed forces of the federal government. 
and the psychological climate in those areas was very congenial. There was peace and quiet in the areas. And over 60 journalists in Lagos, including foreign correspondents, are now in the area. Of course, you better wait to hear the assessments and evaluations and impressions when they come back to Lagos. I want to take this opportunity while on Paris soil to extend to the government and people of France all the best in the new year and the new decade. I'm eagerly looking forward to paying my respects to President Pompidou tomorrow. Thank you. Mr. Secretary General. Sitting. What is the situation in terms of hunger and food in the eastern region of Nigeria? We've heard conflicting reports of starvation. La situation sur les secours au Biafra. As I've said, you know, the press reports were so distorted. My impression in Lagos was completely different from what I've been reading before I went to Lagos. Completely different. This feeling was shared by everybody I talked to. Did you have the opportunity to leave Lagos and visit other parts of Nigeria? I was here less than 24 hours. So you said in Lagos that uh, all the head of states you visited support the general government. I didn't say support yet, General Gowan. I didn't say that. That's one instance of distortion. What I said this morning was, all the heads of states and heads of governments I talked to, without exception, had a kind word about General Gowan. That's what I said. I said without exception. Did you meet him? Thank you. 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 Thank